Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Pop! OS 20.10 right after this. So this has been out for a while. I mean, they almost released it the same day that uh, Ubuntu came out with the same, uh, uh, this, their release of 2010. It was, I think, it was either in the afternoon on the 23rd or or maybe, maybe it was the next day. I, but I know it was pretty soon and I had it on my list to do and I just hadn't gotten to it yet. So I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to do this a couple of, uh, a couple of ways tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to go through the installer on a VM I have a laptop here that is cranky, and and this could go horribly wrong, but I'm going to upgrade it from 2004 to 2010 tonight on air, <laughs> live, so, well, live, so to speak. But I won't leave anything out. I mean, if it goes horribly wrong, it goes horribly wrong, but we're just going to try it. So, let, all right, let's jump in. So, uh, so what is it? So, it's a, it's a, a distribution that's done by System76, mostly for their own hardware, but they do support other hardware as well. They do have native support for AMD, and they have, of course, native support for NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, it is based on uh, Ubuntu Desktop 2010, and it adds some additional System76 developed applications, which are written in Rust. Uh, it was like I said, it was released October the 23rd, and it will be supported until sometime at the end of July 20, uh, 2021. So, about nine months from now, and then it will it will be you'll be waiting. For, you'll you will have had you probably will have 2104 uh, in April anyway. So, uh, but yeah, these are short term releases. They're just meant for patching and to release a few new things. Uh, to get to take advantage of new hardware because we're in the uh, we're in the Christmas season and so we need operating systems that can support new hardware. Uh, there is support in this re in this kernel for the AMD uh, Zen 3 architecture that would be the 5000 series of chips. And uh, and so yeah, that <laughs> if you can get them, <laughs> I noticed they sold out pretty quick today. Uh, at the time I'm doing this video, so it supports the new Debian package format, which is based on Deb 8.22. It's it's just the package is set up so it's easier to understand, and it's a lot more compact than some of the previous Deb packages. But of course, it still supports the older format as well. So you're not you're not going to be losing anything. Uh, it has uh, support for fractional scaling, and I noticed it's 125%, 150, or 175. Uh, this release also provides hybrid graphics support. So if you are on a mobile computer, a laptop, or whatever, uh, it'll offer some lower power benefits because it will sh it'll shift the execution onto the inbuilt CPU uh, as graphics processor when uh, you're using less graphics intensive applications and you can you can have it set up so that it automatically does that switch uh, it also then switches to high performance mode when there's more intensive graphics applications going on like a game or something like that but you can also tell the application which mode to use when you launch it so once you've turned that switch on then yeah you can switch back and forth fairly easily with the application but remember it's going to switch the entire machine it's not just going to switch it in for that application also it provides external monitor support in hybrid graphics mode without rebooting and in the past when you did that you of course had to restart the machine to use the other processor snaps is not installed or enabled by default uh, there is a, a feature in the notifications now uh, on the desktop which allows you to turn it off. So if you don't want to be disturbed, you can shut the whole thing down or you can partially disable it by application. So if some of the applications like <clears throat> Telegram, for example, um, <laughs> might be throwing notifications up on your windows all the time, you can turn those off. Uh, System76 does not collect or store any information from the hardware installation, and they, they qualify it that way because they do collect information in order to determine what packages are needed for your system, but they don't store that data. Uh, the privacy also extends into flat packs as well, in that if the flat pack is attempting to collect data, the 
operating system will intervene and pop up and ask permission uh, from you to allow it or not. Pop! OS can also inform you when you need firmware updates, and I have noticed this on my Lenovo laptop and also on the MSI laptop. The difference between the two, though, is on the Lenovo, it actually performed the update for me, so I didn't have to go and download a new BIOS or a UEFI uh, to install it, and it did that automatically. It also handles some other devices as well. <clears throat> On the MSI, though, it didn't. It did tell me there was a firmware update, but it didn't. It, it said it couldn't handle that particular means of installing the BIOS. This, of course, is meant for their hardware, but I was surprised that it worked on Lenovo's as well. So I guess that was fortunate, but the MSI just had to do it in the normal way once I was informed that it was a BIOS update. The desktop is, uh, is based on GNOME 3.38, and that delivers a major performance boost. And of course, it has a smaller memory footprint as well. But it implements all the same features that GNOME uh, it, that, is, that is found in the uh, Ubuntu side of things as well. Uh, there's also a stacking uh, Windows uh, tiling mode, and, uh, and I'll probably come back and do a video on that by itself. Uh, Probably won't demo that tonight, but uh, probably will come back and do a separate one on that one. And then in there, if uh, you can specify exceptions for particular windows that just don't behave well inside of a tile and when they're in a tiling, automatic tiling mode. So you can accept those out so that they'll create a freestanding window. Uh, there is also built-in power management profiles that you can take advantage of. Uh, and it also provides packages if you're interested in doing TensorFlow development or CUDA development. Uh, that is also, and CUDA is the Computing Unified Device Architecture, which is a proprietary standard of NVIDIA for executing uh, program code directly onto the GPU in parallel mode. And of course, uh, as I mentioned already, the Linux kernel is 5.8. So, uh, I'm going to do this in a couple of ways tonight. This could end badly. <laughs> We're going to try that. Let me go get set up. And I'll be right back. Okay. So, for the first part of this, I'm just going to, again, I'm sorry, my knuck is, I've been moving stuff around. My knuck is still in use. Uh, I'm still waiting for the uh, NFS 2.0 drop. They did another release candidate. So, uh, I, I know they're finding some issues, and that's fine. Find all the issues we want. I'm in no hurry, so, but uh, I'll get back to doing hardware reviews uh, soon, but uh, I just need the machine back <laughs> to do them. All right, so let's go ahead and install a, uh, a new VM for the Pop! OS. And and I'll just call it that. I'll go out and get my, I've already uploaded to the NAS my ISO file. And I have, I have trimmed some of them back because I don't need quite that many. I'm going to try this in spice mode tonight. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with this, with this kernel lately, but, uh, you know, if it doesn't work, we can always switch back. And we'll go 4096. All right. We got it. Got it. And then we'll just wait for it to set it up. Still got it locked and still building it out. Okay, so we're ready to go. And we'll go ahead and start it up. Yep, it seems to be doing something. And it's booting. Now this one, this machine is, okay, all right. So it should come back up with a, yeah, here we go, the install OS. Again, it selects the language, whatever it is for you. Uh, and then your country code, your keyboard layout, and mine, of course, is US. Uh, and then if you have a, any specifics you want for your languages, I'm just gonna pick the default, which should be UTF-8. For US. So I'm going to do a clean install. And yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> that would be weird putting a, uh, a dual boot on a VM. That would be kind of strange. I don't need to encrypt this. Uh, it, it's on a VM, but that is one of its features is it does, it does support inbuilt 
uh, encryption, as probably many of you know that have used Pop! OS, that you can encrypt the drive while you're installing it. There's a lot of them that do that today. I don't, I, you know, it's not as big a deal as it was when Pop! OS first came out because there wasn't anybody doing it. And now everybody is. So I'll be back. This will take a while. Okay. So uh, one thing I was going to mention is that it's they also offer 20.04, uh, the desktop as well, with or without the NVIDIA drivers, and 20.10 is also offered with or without the NVIDIA drivers built in. So you don't have to do a separate install. The, if you do elect to go with 20.04, that's supported for the next five years. So, yeah, you got quite a while, quite a while for that one, uh, and that is a Linux 5.4 kernel. So I, we're done, so I'm just going to go ahead and restart this, and... Uh, uh, and let it finish up its thing. So it does have a couple of jobs that have to come down. I noticed one failure there. I'm not not quite sure what that is. I'll run my usual tests on this when we come up. And um, yeah, this machine is taking a little bit longer to come up than normal. And this has nothing to do with uh, Pop! OS. Uh, I think it's mainly because it is a it's a NUC 10 mobile. I've moved the other NUC over there uh, into into doing performing this task. So I think I need to go switch it into performance mode. I think it's 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 running in low power mode right now. So I think I need to go speed that up a little bit. All right, so we'll, I'll I'll do that tomorrow. I just noticed that tonight that it was running in low power mode. I was like, wait. <laughs> I don't want it running in low power mode. Okay, we'll go ahead and set up an account. And we'll start using it. So um, it's once, all right, we're done. So now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and drop. Now I could, I, I did this last time or I went in here and actually did the install for the, it, it'll check for updates eventually, you'll find them. And, but uh, one thing about the pop shop is, you notice this is out here. So this allows me to edit my software sources, my repos. And not only can you change where your repos are, but you can also rename them if you wish as well. So yeah, you can also have extra sources and all that stuff as well. So yeah, it just popped me back in here because it's saying I got stuff to do. I'm not actually gonna do it this way. So it's gonna, add, it's gonna bug me for all four of them now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close it up. I'm just gonna go out from the command line and do it. Uh, did I close down my, I did. Why did I do that? I wanted to close that down. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, now, I've already done this update, but we'll do it again. Just because I'm a creature of habit, and I don't know how to type this any other way. No, I'm kidding. So I'll go ahead and let that run, and this will be a while. There's 67 packages that I think I saw that needed to be upgraded, so this will also take a little bit of time, so I'll be back. Okay, I've... Uh, Installed the uh, patches. And I've also installed my usual set of hardware. The reason I did that was because simply because I, I want to make sure this is clean without any installations going on so that I can measure the memory and see how much it's actually taking. So let's, uh, first of all, we need to go to settings and change my screen resolution. Uh, we'll go down here. That looks good. I won't, I won't close the top one this time. And as far as wallpaper is concerned, yeah, we have to do the important stuff, right? What does the wallpaper look like? Um, yeah, some of the old, some of the new. Let's see if we see. Uh, yeah. I kind of like, I, kinda, I mean, I use this one, so I kind of like that one, so. I think I'll stick with the old one. All right, so 
Let's get a terminal window up. And I wish they'd fix this. I really don't like this, uh, where I have to drag the window open. It used to, it used to uh, automatically keep it at 80 by 24, but apparently that's just not the new way. We have to do it like KDE does it. So anyway, um, let's go check a look and see what my memory looks like right now. So 898 meg. Now remember this has no drivers for NVIDIA. This is just using the discrete. So yeah, that's why I want to reboot. That's why I want to upgrade the, the uh, laptop because that does have an NVIDIA card and it has a 1060. If that gives you some idea how old it is. But it has a 1060, uh, a, a, a GTX 1060 uh, in it anyway. And so that's the one I will be upgrading tonight just to see. So. Uh, let's do, uh, let me do a disable plugin. Okay, so, and Glances is saying with the app cache 1.13 gig. So, yep. As far as disk space is concerned, 6 gig. That's about normal. Um, for yeah, that's pretty normal for a, a gnome based distribution. Now, they they do install a lot of applications with this. Hang on just a second, sorry about that. Uh, so they do install a number of applications. So let's go look at that. Uh, but you know, they have the office suite, there's some utilities. Uh, there's, you know, there's also some system functions like, you know, the typical stuff you normally see. Disk usage analysis, which is the exploded diagram. I think I showed that the last time. Or we can look at that. Uh, maybe I need to, yeah, I need to go and just click on it. And then it'll analyze it and then it should show me an exploded view of my drive. Whenever it gets done. While that's doing that, I'll go off and do something else uh, while it's cruising through six gig of data. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to do here? Um, you know, fetch, see how many packages got. Now I installed some packages because I put on HTOP, I put on glances, I put on you know, fetch, and I put on get. So a lot of times that's gonna bring in an awful lot of Python uh, uh, packages as well. So. Yeah, I think it was around 1600 flat and then it added another 175 or so. So to give you some idea, um, the other thing I always like to do is I have put Linus out here. So we'll go ahead and we'll run a Linus audit and just see what we get. It's done. So there's the exploded view. It gives you an idea of where most of the disk space is going. Of course, the user is not that's not <laughs> that's not a big surprise. So it's everything in the kitchen sink is in there these days. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're done with that. Uh, I think. Oh, it's waiting on me. Let me get that going because otherwise we'll be sitting here all night. Ah, the meme continues. I have to blow the password once at least a video to miss it. <laughs> all right. So. While that's going, seeing some new stuff here, like the power service. I know that, yeah, there is some power management profiles, like I had said earlier in this. So uh, let me let me just wait till that's done. Yeah. <clears throat> it's always installed at cryptography while it goes through all the layers of cryptographic uh, software that's installed on the machine. So let's see what we got here. A 63. Yeah. I'm sure I have a number of problems that are, that are warnings. IP tables. Wow. And let's see. Nothing new. Nothing new. That's all, it's all the same. 
One thing I should have looked at was what the version of this was. Okay, that's normal. Cups, yeah, we can get rid of that. If you're doing printing, yeah, cups is fine, but I don't leave it on my systems. I just prefer not to <laughs> print that way. Ah, okay. Now it's requiring check root kit, OSSCE or uh, OSSEC or RK Hunter. This looks like a little bit, uh, it's 302. So that, yeah, that's the same as it was last time I ran it. Uh, I mean, it's 63 is a little low for, yeah, it's a little low, but given the number, the you know, they've got, they've added on some things here and every time they add something on, it, they, <laughs> you fail, if you fail the test, it just subtracts off from a hundred. So, so yeah. So 63% of the tests pass. That's what that means. Um, what else can we look at? I mean, it's basically, if, if you saw the video on Ubuntu, it's the same. I guess I should say Ubuntu, and we'll do it right. So, yeah. Um, but you can, you can partner things up if you want. You can get them out of order. And I don't think, no, yeah, they don't have a way to reshuffle it back in alphabetical order. So maybe the known people will finally catch up with, it seems like they add a few things and then they, and, and it's been slow with every release, but I, I suspect that is version 82 of Firefox. I am sure, certain of it. And of course the first time up, it's gotta go create all of its directories. <laughs> yeah, start setup, no thanks. Uh, yeah, we guess we'll do that. And there we are. And this should be 82. And it is 82.02. So, I mean, I, we could go in, like I said, I'll do one on the tiling manage on the auto tile, uh, tiler after, after this, I, I want to spend some time with it. Um, and and then go through all of the features instead of just showing a couple of them you know uh, and uh so that's what i will do so right now let me go set up and, and we'll, <laughs> we'll try we will try to do an upgrade on this laptop that i'm currently running on so hang on i'll be right back okay i am <clears throat> i am back on my laptop and uh so um i saw I saw some pretty crazy ways of doing this upgrade, and I was like, "What? It can't be that hard!" And uh, and, and it isn't. So, uh, it, if you have this up for uh, as you reboot, it'll tell you that there's a new available update for the system. This is 2004 LTS version. So, and we can let me validate that so you know that no sleight of hand, truth in advertising, right? So it's 2004 LTS is what I'm running. And I want to upgrade this to 2010. And the reason I want to do that is because there are some things that stabilize <laughs> this cranky laptop. This laptop is usually pretty nasty when it comes to most distributions. It doesn't like anything. But it seems to like Pop! OS and, and it seems to like Fedora. So anyway, um, let's go to the settings menu because that's where you're going to find the update. So you don't have to do anything crazy other than just go down here to the OS upgrade and it's already lit. So, uh, and then the first thing you'll do is just download it. And while we're waiting for that to download, I will be right back. One thing I should tell you is I have already done a backup of my system and I have also tarred my home directory up and put it over onto my NAS. Uh, the one thing I did not do that I still need to do is I need to do an app list installed and then I'll put this out to uh, something called install packages and I'll just make sure it's there and then I'll, I'll move I guess I should probably put the name of the machine eh?
and then I'll copy it to my NAS. That way it just I can just do a, a diff on it and then I'll have everything I need. There it is, and it should be out there. MSI, along with the tar ball. There's the, there's the packages and there's my tar. So yeah, I wasn't lying, I did my backups. So if it goes horribly wrong, I can always go back to 2004 or do a full, a full uh, upgrade. But I never, I never do an update, a major update without taking a backup. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, after you've been burned a couple of times, you kind of learn to do that. I'll be back. It's still downloading, so. Okay, so this other button down here is, is as it says, is, yeah, you'll notice it says it's ready to upgrade. But if you just, if you don't want to do this and you just want to ignore this release, you can just dismiss it and then it won't bug you until the next release of, of uh, Pop! OS comes out in the spring. So I'm going to go ahead and start the upgrade. And it says oh, it's going to reboot, and it's going to tell me all the stuff about what's coming. These are all the new features. And the other thing this will do is, of course, is I have a couple of PPAs. One of them is for Docker, and one of them is for Gluster. So it will disable those. I'll have to re-enable them. I've already checked. There's uh, there is implementations of. Uh, 2010 for both of those so I can put my PPAs back in and then just update the pointers at what what release I want to get so not full cal but groovy is one they will look for so we'll go ahead and do that yeah let's see it's not going to show the video because it's turned it off. So, so I will pause this until it's done. Okay, so it is 8.45 right now. I started this at about 8.30. So about 15 minutes to do the upgrade. Did it work? Well, let's find out. <clears throat> yes, it did. I'm on 2010. Now the question is, how much of this um, did it remove? So let's take a look at the, well, the most of my packages are here. Yep. And <laughs> need restart. I love this. It's great. I love that icon. Um, okay. So can I do that? Yes. <clears throat> it's taken 105 now and this is with the nvidia drivers so and all of this stuff that i have running uh the only other question i have is can uh well yeah it seems all right and it's telling me i have an update available <laughs> already <laughs> uh, let's see oh, it's only a couple of them though so that's not too bad um, I will probably I'm, I won't do this tonight with you I don't want to I mean the video is probably long enough as it is but one thing I do want to find out is what it might have done to now I put the, the the Linus over on opt and it, it has removed it. So uh, we'll do a get close. We'll just go bring it down again. This is probably not the best place to put it because you know that if if there is an update, <laughs> they may override it. So, but that's all right. It's not that big, and so I can just go get it. I just want to see if I have to redo my hardening. Or whether it preserved all of that stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's faster than 100. Well, is it? I don't. It doesn't seem like it's running at the right speed. Let me. Uh, let me do an IP. Let's just see. You're not doing something weird, are you? No. It says one. It says one gig. All right. So <clears throat> it's probably just they're busy. On the on the GitHub side, so I'll do an audit system, and we'll just take a look and see what we get here. 
it's possible I may have some new work to do uh, on this be because this is a newer version than, the, than I hardened under. And I did not take this all the way up to, you know, the, my usual, when I, when I did it initially, I was in a hurry to get this set up, so I didn't spend quite as much time on this one as I usually do. So I'm expecting it to be around 85, 84, somewhere around in there. <clears throat> one thing I do want to know is it, does it still, <laughs> did it put the drivers out? Four five five two eight. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So I'll be back. This is going to take a while because it's got to it's got to go look through all of System D's stuff. So. Okay, it's back moving again. So it's stalled now on crypt. And <laughs> remove my issue and issue net. Oh no! I'm going to get marked down for that. And it also redid all that. So it basically eh, it knocked me down a ways from where I was. Yeah, so it did undo some of my hardening. Uh, and yeah, it trashed my aid database. And so I, yeah, we'll reset this up. But, you know, it's not bad. Not bad. I mean, at least I didn't lose all the hardening that I did. Um, anyway, that's all. Uh, let, me, uh, let me just switch gears here. So yeah, um, Pop OS. I've been using it for probably the last since what September, end of no end of August, when uh, Fedora went kind of crazy and uh, broke my drivers. So um, I am installing. I have insta uh, Fedora installed on my main machine. This is just my machine I use for the videos, but uh, yeah, I do have that. So. Uh, Pop! OS, I, I like it. I enjoy using it. Um, no, I don't really care about one way or the other. I just use, <laughs> I drop to the command line, so I don't really care what the desktop environment is. I do use some apps, and um, anyway, that's the, uh, I will come back with a, a, a tiling window demo, and uh, probably be doing that maybe next week sometime. But hope you enjoyed this, and so far so good. It looks like it actually fixed one of the problems I've been having. One of the problems I've been having with this machine, <laughs> this machine has a lot of problems, but one of the, the problems with this particular machine is, is that uh, whenever I would reboot the machine, it would lose the external monitor. And uh, and I always, I don't know why, but I always had to, re I had to shut it off, come back up, and then go into the BIOS and just save and exit, not do anything else. So it's something that's changing. It's, say, it's changing something in one of the, uh, either one of the uh, memory locations that's used by the BIOS. But, and that apparently gets flushed out when I go in and do that. But, uh, it, that, but that seems to be fixed now. It, it restarted and it brought up the external monitor just fine. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Bye for now.